Hi, I'm James with OneHourSmartHome.com, and today we're going to talk about your Nest heat pump wiring, the wiring diagram for the Nest heat pump. So if you've got a Nest heat pump, we're going to explain how you wire it up and what all these different wires mean so you understand how the Nest works, how your heat pump works, and how to wire this thing up and install it because it's a little bit more tricky than a typical HVAC system. The Nest does work great with heat pumps. You just got to wire it up right and kind of know a little bit about what you're doing. So a Nest heat pump is different, or a heat pump, I should say, is different than a traditional HVAC system. A traditional HVAC system uses a gas furnace with a blower. It burns natural gas and then circulates that hot air throughout your house. And then it has an AC system or air conditioner system with a compressor and a condenser connected. And what that AC does is take heat from within your house, move it to the outside, and then allows you to circulate cool air through your house. A heat pump doesn't have any kind of natural gas connection. What it is is an air conditioner in the summer, and then it has what's called a reversing valve, which uses that same air conditioner basically to reverse the flow of heat. So it actually takes heat from the outside, even when it's cold, and brings that amount of heat into your house to heat your home up. So it's transferring heat rather than having a dedicated source of dry heat like a furnace with burning gas. And the other part of a heat pump is typically they have an electric coil in them just like a space heater, but it's inside your heat pump blower area and that's to help your heat pump on really cold days. So knowing how a heat pump works, basically it's transferring energy, whereas a HVAC system is burning fuel and then sending that warm, hot, dry air throughout your house, okay? So in air conditioning mode, a heat pump and an air conditioner work pretty much the same, but in heating mode, a traditional HVAC system with a furnace is much different than a heat pump. So why that's important to know is because it means how you wire these two things up are very different. We're just gonna start over here with the Nest heat pump and I've highlighted in red all the things that you might have if you've got a heat pump, all the wires that you might have. So the first one you're gonna have is the Y1 wire and that is your call for heating or cooling. So when your Nest realizes you need to heat or cool your home, it's going to send power that comes in through this RC terminal and it's gonna go back out to the Y1 terminal. And what that's gonna do, it's just gonna turn on your heat pump. It's gonna turn it on, it's gonna start circulating in whatever direction it was already set in. It's gonna just turn it on, that's, that's what happens. And what happens then is you've got uh, this OB valve, which is your reversing valve, and the reversing valve, uh, do you wanna say hi in the video? <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, I guess not, maybe. Uh, did you get whatever coat you wanted? That was my wife and my dog back there. Um, so the reversing valve is OB. And what the reversing valve does is it is either energized or de-energized. When you have a call for heating or cooling, the Y1 wire is gonna be energized. It's gonna start up the heat pump. When you have the OB energized, that can either be energized to provide heat or it will reverse the flow of the system and it will uh, provide cooling and vice versa. So your system could be energized, provides cooling or non-energized, provides cooling. It could go either way. It depends on the system. For the most part, most systems are going to have the reversing valve. So when it is not getting power, it's providing cooling. And then when it is getting power, it's providing heating. So these two, when you get a call for heating or cooling are typically the two wires that are working in conjunction with each other to determine if you should be heating or cooling. So this reverses the flow of the system, hence the name of the reversing valve. Uh, the other one that we've got here is the G wire. The G wire is the fan wire. And all this is is a blower motor that blows air, whether it's hot or cold throughout your house. The heat pump, will always energize the fan, even if you've got the uh, heating or cooling on. 
The purpose of the G-Wire is if you wanted to circulate air throughout your house without having heater cooling on. So that's what the G-Wire does. Now the last one uh, that we've got here is RC, and this could be RC or RH, it doesn't really matter. Um, but RC is the power wire. This is the incoming power from the furnace. This is what powers your Nest thermostat and then allows power to be sent through any of these other terminals to trigger the action that you want. So in a Nest, you can really put it in RC or RH. These serve the same purpose unless you have a dual fuel system and then it's designed so RC is for your cooling wire power and your RH is for your heating wire power. The other thing that we've got here and we'll actually, we'll go up here to the top. Uh, the next thing that you need to know about with a heat pump is your W2 or auxiliary heat wire. And what the W2 or auxiliary heat wire is, is that is the uh, wire and the control for the electrical heating coil inside of your uh, HVAC system, your heat pump. So because a heat pump sometimes struggles in temperatures under 40 degrees, what the auxiliary wire does or the auxiliary system, it's just like that, uh, like a heating coil that you'd find in a uh, little portable electric heater. Obviously it's bigger, but basically it helps the heat pump out. The heat pump can only transfer so much heat when it's really cold outside. So this provides that little boost to get it up to temperature inside, but it is also very inefficient to use the auxiliary heat. Uh, so because it's just an electric heat, so it will use a lot of energy, something to know. Some settings and some thermostats and some uh, HVAC systems will automatically activate the auxiliary heat if the differential between what you've got the thermostat set to and what the actual system is set to is so great, it will automatically turn on the auxiliary heat just because trying to get that temperature up. That's not all systems, but there are some settings like that. Uh, but this W2 auxiliary is that auxiliary electrical heating coil for your heat pump. The common wire, uh, you're going to find this a lot in heat pumps. That is so that your thermostat has power without going through these other terminals. It allows the thermostat to provide, to have constant power and recharge its internal batteries and electronics. So you have a good connection to Wi-Fi. Um, you're able to control it easily and all that kind of stuff. So the common wire it's just a route for power to go from RC, charge your battery inside the nest, and then go back to the heat pump through the common wire. It's just a path for charging. Now the last one we've got here is the star terminal, which is emergency heat or accessory. So in a lot of cases, auxiliary heat and emergency heat are kind of the same thing, but they can also be different. So auxiliary heat is intended as a supplement to your heat pump just to get the temperature up emergency heat is if your heat pump fails so the transfer system the compressor and the reversing valve fail and you don't have any kind of heat pump use then the emergency heat is that heating coil and it is designed to turn on and provide you emergency heat so that you don't have frozen pipes in an emergency now really the emergency heat and the auxiliary heat are typically powering the same coil so this is one coil that can either be powered by the auxiliary heat in normal operation, or if for whatever reason, it detects that the reversing valve and the heating and cooling are not working, or the temperature is so low, it, the algorithm is gonna say, okay, these things aren't working, turn on the emergency heat, just leave it on, and leave that coil on to heat up the house because this isn't working. So that is how the emergency heat works. Uh, you may need it, you may not need it with your heat pump. It depends. A lot of times, all you're going to need is this auxiliary, and that's going to do what you need for your uh, emergency heat and auxiliary heat because there's some software programming within the nest. You don't have to have this emergency heat, but it basically is allowing you to run the coil, the electric coil, without running your heat pump system if you wanted to do that, uh, or in an emergency, it allows you to do that. So it's not necessarily required, but it will allow you to do that. So that is our explanation of how to wire a Nest heat pump and the different wires that work with a Nest heat pump. We hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments, questions you've got below. 
And uh, if you've got other questions about adding a common wire or Nest thermostat wiring, you just have a regular HVAC system, we've got some other videos, so go ahead and check those out. Please like this video, subscribe, and you can support us by clicking on any of the links below or going to our website, onehoursmarthome.com, sign up for our email list, look at some of the content we've got on smart home technology and just general uh, home maintenance and how to take care of your home. So we appreciate you. Thank you for watching this video, and we will see you next time. Thank you.